Hello ladies and gents, this is Spoonie Pizzas here with another Pro Evolution Soccer 2019 video. Today I'm going to be talking about the tactics employed by the two finalists in the Pez League final. So we're talking about Etorito and Uzmakabel. So let's start off with um, Etorito on the left hand side of the screen. Okay, so ignore the, the right hand side for the minute. So first off, Every position here absolutely matters. Um, you'll be seeing the uh, the I've put in the same player so you can line up the font as well. So the names, every single inch, like this would be wrong. That's right. Okay, so literally it has to be nailed on exactly where they are right now. That does have an impact on where they play. That's why they're so specific when they move players around. Um, if you ever watch them, so. That's the first thing to note. So he starts off with a 4-3-3. Um, you will notice that Bellerin is a right back and he has three centre backs. Uh, the reason for this is because obviously if they're all centre backs, they all stay back as a unit. But what um, Etorito does is he uses Bellerin as an additional um, attacking player because he will bomb down on this right hand side, giving him an extra option. And it generally helps the attack and play and makes it less stifling. I think if you had, um, like Usmil, um didn't have, he has uh, just centre backs and he found it um, quite hard to create. Whereas I thought on the overall gameplay, I thought um, Etorito um, pretty much dominated the game, had the better chances, but um, Uzmakabel's defence was better. So it's one of those. It was, it was sort of like attack against defence. Um, and uh, Uzmakabel's defence held up in the end and he got the win um, off one of his long throw-ins. And uh, I wonder if he, uh, he was checking out one of my tutorials on the uh, on the uh, that, that, that lethal throw-in uh, tutorial I put up um, just before the final. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. I'm sure he's been doing it for ages. Um, anyway, so yeah. So like I said, he had a right back for bombing forward. Then he has Torreira. So basically you've got a four here. With Torreira just sitting in um, in front of that back back three almost, um, sometimes a back four, uh, just shielding and trying to intercept um, any through balls, making it really difficult. Then we have uh, attacking midfielder and central midfielder in these positions here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then obviously the three center forwards. You notice know, they're all quite closely bunched together. Um, what they like to do is just literally just go down the middle. Don't bother with the wings um, and close, intricate passing, which is where you're going to see the tactics come in. So if we look at the uh, attacking instructions for Etorito, it's a possession, short pass, central attacking area, maintain formation, and three for support range. So he likes possession, um, so the players go towards the ball carrier. And also with the three for support range, it means players come short for the ball. Why does he like this? Because he likes to play the one-twos. He likes to come short play a pass and then that player will run in behind and he will play usually a pass or two. It's like what I say, what I call the, uh, if you look at my advanced um, chance creation tutorial video, it's all about the three passes. So you play the first pass to set your player on a run. The second pass then stops or generally sometimes stops the um, AI defenders tracking your initial player's run. And then the third pass will be through to the, the uh the first player that laid off the ball and started making the run in the first place so that's that's one of the reasons he likes this possession and short pass and he doesn't really veer away from it at all it's attacking central attacking error because obviously they literally just go down the middle they do not bother with the wings it's everything is pretty much down down the middle the only time i use the wing is generally if bellerin's up up with them um and that's pretty much it Maintain formation is pretty self-explanatory. He wants those three strikers to stay where they are. Defensively, he plays all out defense, middle, conservative, and five defensive line, and eight for compactness. So what he's doing here is he's having all his defenders rush back as quickly as possible. This is going to help Bellerin, who plays as a right back, so he's going to get him back quicker by doing this. So that's one of his probably his thought processes. He plays five for defensive line um, because you don't want to drop back too deep. And obviously with Bellerin running forward, he's got less ground to catch up than if they're, they're deeper than that. You don't want to give up too much ground because it makes you, 
you're just defending your penalty here and anything can happen. Then he's going for eight for compactness. Again, because everyone plays through the middle in this in this in this world, he's going for a real nice compactness there. And same for that containment error, middle containment error. It's because everyone goes through the middle, so he's got um Torreira sort of sweeping and trying to intercept those passes. So that's that was that was the initial setup for Etorito. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, Uzmakabel. So, he starts off with a counter-attack, long pass, central attacking air, maintain formation, and three for support range. And why is he doing this? Um, so you can see here, he's got the four center backs. Let's cover off this first. The defensive midfielder off to the left, central midfielder, attacking midfielder, and then the three strikers in the middle. So... Like I say, he's going for a counter-attack and long pass. The reason for this is because he wants these three to run forward. Now, what that did actually do was actually starve him, have, uh, starve him of sort of um, getting players in behind, um, in behind Etorito, I found. That's, that's, that's where he was sort of struggling. Um, he played central attack and air again, right through the middle, maintained formation. And three for support range, so he wants players coming in short. But the problem is, when you play counter attack, your players, if they're ahead of the ball, they will run forward. Um, only if you get within that three, three for support range, will they ever come close to the ball. So it can make it very stifling, especially if you got Torreira just sort of sweeping in behind. Um, you know, sweep, sweeping in between uh, midfield and defence, it's going to make it hard to. Um, certainly bring players closer towards you um so yeah that's that that was probably a negative on his half but hey he won the game at the end anyway moving on to the defense frontline pressure middle aggressive so it's completely opposite to um etorito here with the frontline pressure and aggressive um he went for a five defense five for defensive line eight for compactness i thought defensively he was absolutely superb um, basically, he was keeping players back. He was running players back manually and then using the frontline pressure and aggressive to press at certain points when um, Etorito got close to his goal. It was very, very smart in that in that sense. I, I really like that from uh, Liz Macabell. On to advanced instructions. One of the things I didn't cover off with Etorito was the counter target. And he puts it on this, this right center forward here. Why does he do that? Well, the reason is, is because... If you play a counter target on a striker, it pushes the defense back. So it allows the other two um, sort of space just in front of the defense and just behind. Because what you'll find is that player will push his defense right back into the penalty area. And then that allows um, Etorito to play balls into the other two strikers, getting a little bit of space. And it also allows Urzel and Ramsey to play the ball into Aubameyang and Lacazette. Because Welbeck would be pushing in, pushing the defence back, he can then start setting up the one twos with Abamyang. So he may play it into Abamyang with Lacazette or Ramsey. Abamyang will then play it back maybe to Ramsey or Urzel. He starts his run, then Urzel can play it to Ramsey or the vice versa, and then they can feed Abamyang who's on his run. Same for Lacazette. Whilst Welbeck is more or less just a foil. It's purely just a foil to um to get back it to get in behind, so that's uh, that was quite an interesting move again from Etorito. On to the uh, advanced tactic for as Macabell. I wasn't able to see his tactic, so I'm going to assume it was defensive on uh, Kalashnic. The reason for this is because Kalashnic was always sort of patrolling that area, and he don't, I don't think he's got. Um, no, he's an offensive fullback, so he hasn't got that anchor role. So I was sort of surprised that he didn't choose someone with anchor role, but maybe that's because, and I'm pretty sure that's why he went for defensive on Kalashnic, because that would be the only way you could keep that defensive midfielder back. Okay, so that was the tactics when it was 0-0. When the scoreline was at 1-1, as Maccabell made a host of changes, um, Etorito just had a chance, and what you found was that um, 
had a, had at this region had a really good chance, and he was sort of getting on top of Azmakabel. So Azmakabel decided to change it. So he went into his tactical instructions and he switched it a little bit. So what we're going to see now is he switched the long pass to short pass, the central attacking error to wide attacking error, the the maintain formation to flexible, and he also changed the support range from three to five. Okay, so now. Instead of having that long pass, which is pushing players away, players that are nearby are going to come a little bit shorter. And that's also going to help with the support range. So he's increased the support range. So players further away will actually come... Um, well, sorry, players that are really close will move a little bit further away. So he's sort of mixed it up there. So with a build-up of short pass, it means players come to the ball. And with the support range, it means that um any players within the uh, vicinity of the ball carrier will basically move a bit further away than they were beforehand so interesting changes certainly the attacking error wide attacking error that was a bit of a surprise because most players just play right down the middle and he left it like that so this was at 1-1 then all hell broke loose. Etorito scores and makes it 2-1. Etorito then decides to change his tactics. One of the interesting things was he switched to pass assist 2. He dropped his pass assist three from 3 to 2. Why did he do this? Because when he changed his formation to this diamond here, with pass assist 3, it's very, very hard to pick passes when players are close together. Passer support, pass assist three is ideal if you've got long, you know, you want to go real, really direct and it really doesn't matter which player you're going to play it to. It's going to pick out the right power and you want those um, overpowering over the top three balls. So he went for pass assist two. Now this is interesting because, so that allows him to play through midfield easier. So that was the only change that um, there was the only changes that Etorito made, just purely formation changes. He left the um, counter-attack on Welbeck. Again, note all their positions. Hector Bellerin's still right back. All these are still the same. Now, for Azbeka Bell, when he went 2-1 down, what did he do? He went to... Defensive, In, he went to his defensive instructions and increased his defensive line to 10. He really pushed that defensive line up. He needed a goal. Everything else, he left the same. Sorry, sorry, no he didn't, no he didn't. The attacking instructions, he changed from short pass to long pass, from wide to central attacking area, from flexible to maintain formation, and from five for support range to three for support range. Then he got the he got the equalizer. <laughs> He's, he got the he got the equalizer to bring it back to two two. And what happened then? Well, Etorito went straight back to his formation, but the thing he forgot. What did he forget to do? He didn't change his support. Um, he didn't change his pass assistance back to three. Maybe he forgot. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot going on. Um, there was a pause in the game. I'd love to know the reason why. Maybe I can ask the, some of the guys that attended. But there was a long pause in the game at 1-1. And it seemed to rattle Etorito. He, he was sort of pointing. And I thought, hmm, he's getting under your skin a little bit. But anyway, enough on that. So Etorito went back to his, he reverted straight back to the same tactics. Counter attack on, um, oh, so, sorry, counter target on Welbeck again. Well, it stayed the same, really. Um, it was literally just a formation change, but straight back. What did Azbekamal do? The only change he made was to his defensive line, and he set it to five. He didn't need him too high up. He didn't need that goal. He left everything else the same, and then got the winner from a long throw 
similar to my throne, lethal throne tutorial. I couldn't believe that um, Eterito let it through, to be honest. He must have been really disappointed with that. He had a defender there. He saw what was going on. He just got the positioning just slightly wrong. And it's fine margins. It's fine margins that will determine these games. And that's exactly what happened. He pulled it back, volleyed it into the top corner. And then I have to admit, as Macabell did use some cheesy stuff. Cheesy corners, but then again, so did Eterito at one point. So that's probably how they play. You know, you got to play to win in those situations. You got to do everything you can to get every every sort of inch and edge. And this this is why they're the finalists. This is why they're the best players in the world. And uh, yeah, congratulations to both guys. Phenomenal game. Um, and uh, I have to say, I actually I actually enjoyed watching it. I didn't actually watch it live, but for this video, I watched it back. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was really impressive. Anyway, I hope you find this uh, video good, guys. Uh, let me know if you let me know you, let me know what you think in the comments. And yeah, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. That'd be a great help. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye bye.